Hello, it's Carrie here. <clears throat> I am coming to you from my home office because it's lockdown number three and um, yeah, we're all at home. <laughs> it's so crazy. I am so fed up with lockdown, but it is what it is. Um, anyway, it's January too. And so I have been spending a lot of this week planning and um, really diving into how I'm going to make this year as amazing as I possibly can. You know, I love the Viktor Frankl quote. He says, anything in life can be taken away from you except for your freedom to choose how you respond. I think it's the most empowering quote I have ever heard in my life. And I really think about it a lot. And I think, how am I choosing to respond? And with lockdown and so many things happening, I really want to choose to respond with so much intention this year. I want to, you know, I've got a word for the year. My word for the year is expansive. It's actually so cute because my husband, Kellen, he bought me this phone case for Christmas and it has the word expansive on it. It's so sweet. Um, but I want my life to be expansive this year. I want to expand into dreaming bigger, into um, living like the best version of my life because, you know, you might have heard me say this before, but I had, you know, having Marley um, in August last year, she's like four, nearly five months old now, um, having, you know, Casey in, at the end of 2018, um, <laughs> Over the past few years, my life has been lived somewhere between guilt and anxiety, trying to juggle having kids and building a business. I definitely need to do a mini series on, you know, building a business with kids because, oh my gosh, the struggle is real. Um, and um, I just, I just want to be more intentional this year about the joy that I bring into my life, the success, the abundance. And I know so much is possible and I know we can all you know, live our lives with more intention to create harmony and success. And, you know, I just want to do it. And so, um, so yeah, so I've been spending, you know, this, this past week, just really in planning mode, giving myself permission to really think through what I want to achieve. I also have spent time investing in myself and in my business. I just finished a VIP day with Stu McLaren and, it's so important that we take time where we can to invest in our own learning because bloody hell, it was so transformational. Like sometimes you just need to talk to somebody else about where you're at and what you want to do and your ideas and, you know, just hash it out with someone. It's really powerful. You are not alone. So, um, so get, get the support and help you need, you know, especially if you're wanting to build a business, which I'm guessing you are because yeah, we're here for you. FEA is here for you. And if you're a member, you've got so much support available to you. And if you're not a member, then, you know, the podcasts and, you know, the team, we're still here for you. Um, but anyway, nevertheless, one of the biggest things I think that holds us back and stops us from having one of our best years is fear. Fear can play such a big role in, um, yeah, just derailing us and keeping us playing small. And so I really want to share with you a conversation that I had live last year with Ken Solomon. She is one of our amazing members. She's been a member for a few years now. She's also now one of our team leaders um, over inside the Female Entrepreneur Association. And she has a business called Her Digital Business. And her story is incredible. So Ken's has sold over 40,000 online courses. And in this conversation that we had live inside the Fearless Challenge um, in December, we talked so much about, um, you know, fear and, and getting out of it, allowing ourselves to, you know, take back our control, step into our own power so that we can create success her story is going to inspire you so much, no matter what stage of your journey you're at. It's phenomenal. I absolutely love her. I loved this conversation and I just thought it was really perfect to share with you. Um, so even if you've listened to it live in the Fearless Challenge, here it is for you again. It is so powerful, this conversation. So many golden nuggets for you to take away and apply to your own business. And it's hopefully going to really get you excited about the possibilities for you. So enjoy it. And also definitely come and share with us over on Instagram. If you've listened to this episode, share it in your stories, tag us at Female Entrepreneur Association at I am Carrie Green. Um, we do giveaways, so you'll be in with a chance of winning some fun stuff. So yeah, if you love this episode, definitely share it so that more people can hear it and be inspired by it. Um, anyway, enjoy. You are watching the She Means Business Show with me, Carrie Green. I'm the founder of the Female Entrepreneur Association and the author of the best-selling book, She Means Business. And every single week, I'm going to be talking with you about how you can turn your ideas into a wildly successful business and actually live the life of your dreams. You can do this and I'm so excited to show you how. So let's get started. Okay.
Okay, well, I'm so excited because we are joined by the amazing Kenz Solomon. She's absolutely blooming incredible. I know Kenz because she's a member inside of our membership and she's also a, a team leader in the members club now as well. And Kenz is the most inspiring woman ever. Her story is absolutely ph phenomenal. Her business is called Her Digital Business. And you're just going to love her. You're going to love her. Kenz, thank you so much for being here and doing this bonus session with me. Thank you so much, Carrie. Thanks for having me. I really want to talk about you and your story and how you went from not having a business to having a really successful business, selling over 42,000 online courses, which is amazing. Um, and talk about like the fears and the struggles and the challenges that you faced to get to this point, because I want people to realize that you can do this. You can be anywhere in the world with a laptop and an inter internet connection and belief in yourself and just taking action and you can create so much success. Because I feel like for so many people, it's like the penny hasn't dropped in the sense that they want it, but they somehow see a disconnect between it actually becoming their reality. So can we talk about your journey? Like take us back to the beginning and how you started your own online business. So it all started when I quit my corporate job just two months before I uh, got married. And I had an agreement with my husband that I'm going to be a stay-at-home mom. I'm going to, and if I get an idea for a project of some sort, I might try working from home, but it's not, um, it's not final yet. Then in 2011, uh, I started um, thinking that I need to do something. I, I'm, I don't feel like just sitting like that. I have something inside me that I want to share with the world. So I decided that I'm going to learn more about digital marketing and uh, start offering services for women in the Arab community and Egyptian community who are still starting their business and need some help with that. And I started learning and I started offering services and because of the feeling that I wasn't good enough at things all the time and that I, I may be asking for too much or something, I started offering huge packages of services for a very, very low price. So before I knew it, people started recommending me to other people because the price was so cheap and people were enjoying actually the services. So I became fully booked real quickly and uh, people started asking me, why don't you create a tutorial for us to tell us what to do until you have an opening. So how can I be able to manage what you do until you have an opening for me so you can come take over? Um, this was the first time I knew I enjoyed teaching online. I created a course in Arabic. It was very simple, very straightforward. Just me recording my screen, managing the page, uh, promoting a group, stuff like that. And people enjoyed it so much. So I started offering my courses in Arabic. Uh, I started doing that in 2012. And up until 2015, I still had that feeling that I don't want to just inspire people here. There is more to me than just that. So I thought of taking uh, like a leap and try to take my business international. I used to uh, learn everything that, I, uh, that helped me start my first local business. I learned it from Udemy. So in Udemy, there's an option for anyone who's studying or not studying to become an instructor. You just apply to become a premium instructor and you're uh, approved. So I decided that I want to do this. But between the decision and the execution, there was this huge gap. Um, I call it the big pile of what ifs. <laughs> what if? People don't like what I'm, um, what I'm saying. What if I say the wrong words? I come from a different culture. I come from a different background. Uh, people won't like the way I look. Maybe I will have to be on camera. I'm a camera shy person. I'm still working on that. And I've, I became so much better now than I was before. So um, I was scared that I have to be on camera for people to trust me and buy from me. Or I have to, I have, to have better English. Maybe my English is not that good. Um, and all of those what ifs kept me from taking that decision for quite a bit until I started feeling burnout from um, all of the uh, requests for my services and having to serve so many clients in order to be making the income that can um, support me at that level back then. Then um, took a lot of courage and a lot of fear and a lot of everything. <laughs> 
And I decided to join Udemy. There was an instructor back then that I used to learn from, and he instructed us to um, to make our courses very, very simple, very straightforward, and as small and little as possible. So my very first course was 30 minutes. And I think everyone has 30 minutes to teach something. Mm-hmm. Right? To say, yeah. So I did create the course. It was 35 minutes to be exact. And it was the power of hashtags or how to use hashtags. It wasn't something like rocket science. It's just something I learned about hashtags and I tried it in my client's pages and I decided to share it. That's it. And I thought that no one would buy that course. No one would even like, you know, no one would give it even a second of attention. Like, who's this? You're teaching an international audience and they have all of their gurus. They have all of their famous people. They have people who have way so much knowledge than you do. Then why are they going to waste their time or money listening to you? But then I I thought like, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try this. If it works, awesome. If it doesn't, then, okay, I'm still invisible. I'm going to crawl back to where I came from, hide and pretend that never happened. <laughs> Literally, this is how this is how I, I tried to convince myself into it. But I have to say that um, those fears, even five years later, they still come to me. Every time I'm creating a new course, I still have those what ifs. What if people don't like it this time? What if people don't leave good reviews? What if someone um, hates on me for some reason? What if, what if, what if? But I still tell myself that no matter how many people are going to even do that, there is someone somewhere in the world who needs my help today. And I want to show up for them. And I want to show up for me. And this this is what helped me to keep creating more and more courses. So my first course got like um, the first 26 hours, the epic 26 hours, because back then Udemy used to send you an email with every single student who enrolls in the course. So it was a party on the phone, a party of email notifications with beeps, beeps, beeps all the time. The, The phone didn't like, it didn't stop until the next day. But now, of course, they don't do that. They realized uh, they spoiled my party, but it's okay. Um, After I I saw those thousand people get into the first course, I got a boost of confidence. I thought like, and then I told myself, maybe, maybe they just, they're not going to like it. Let's wait a few days to see if there are going to be any reviews or something. It's 35 minutes. People will finish it. And then the reviews started coming in and my worst review was four stars. For that course so five stars or four stars that's a star rating and since then i got kind of addicted so oh this is really nice if i know something and i can teach it to someone in like 30 minutes to an hour i can have it as a course and people can actually pay me for that i'm in <laughs> and because the geeky side of me started working I love using tools all the time, a tool that can save me time or make me more money or help me with my productivity. I like to use tools and I invest in tools. So when I started making money from my courses, I started investing in tools. And every tool that I like, I create a course about it and tell people about it and upload it to you. And it kept going like that. And when I started all of this, it was um, around August 2015. And by 2016, I had like my first 4,000 students, I think. Wow. And I got to 10,000 in less than a year. And then it kept growing from there. Wow. And until this day, like right this minute, my, my hands are freezing, really. And it's not because of the, the weather. No. Nope. But I would never think that five years ago, if you told me that I would be doing a live interview with Carrie Green, a female entrepreneur association, and you're going to be doing an interview like that and a feature like that, and you're going to have a business that that inspires people that much, I wouldn't have believed it. <laughs> I would say, yeah, right, of course. <laughs> but think of what you've, it's just incredible what you've made happen. It's, it's so incredible and it's so inspiring. And it just goes to show that we, all, I think what you said was so powerful that we've all got 30 minutes inside of us to teach, like of something to teach. And it, it can be that simple. So many, I feel like so many of the women here as well, we want to make a difference in this world. We want to help others. We want to inspire people. And so many of us feel like, who who am I to do that? And like what you were saying, like those fears of I'm not good enough. Like what are people going to think? Like what if people hate this? 
And I, I love your reasoning of, I think this can help even if, even if this helps one person, I have to show up for them and I have to show up for myself. That is so powerful and it's life-changing, isn't it? Because in telling yourself that, it enabled you, empowered you to then take the action to put yourself out there, which in turn has led to you being able to sell 42,000 courses, but that's forty two over 42,000 lives you have actually directly impacted, plus a lot more because there's so many people now within your space, your community who know you are people listening to this, like, and you know, you even shared about how, um, not in this, but previously in the case study video we have, you talked about even in the members club, how people asked you to be part of their summit. So the, the knock on impact that it's had because you've been able to like get yourself out there is, it's just incredible. The members club has been my happy place, the place that I used to run away from all of my problems and all of my fears to just run to the girls in the Facebook group and either ask for help or just scroll and see other inspirations. People sharing their wins used to inspire me so much. The opportunity to share our offers and share our blog posts, I really am, um, I can't say enough words to describe this as an experience for me because where I'm from, and I'm, I'm still here, I'm still in Egypt right now, but it, it still amazes me that you get to connect with women all across the world and you get to teach people all across the world. And there are like-minded people halfway around the world who are here for you, to cheer you on, to support you, to, to uh, encourage you to do more. I formed 90% of my business friendships from the Members Club Facebook group. Wow. I got my very first summit speaking request from Members Club group. I have my business bestie that we met on the Facebook group and inside the members club. And we've been friends for three years now. Wow. And I'm so grateful because to me as a person, I'm, I'm very introverted. And most of the time when I moved, when I did this move with Udemy, I kept feeling like an outsider. I kept feeling like I don't belong to those people. Everyone doing their personal branding and beautiful photo shoots and you know, showcasing their business and their houses and their cars and their everything and their styles. And I felt like no matter how much I would try to look like that, it won't feel right. It won't feel me. And the only, the only space I didn't feel like a stranger was inside the members club because the women in there were so humble. <laughs> no one has ever like talked to me from a different uh, perspective just because I'm Arab or hijabi or whatever. And every time I asked for help, I found help. Every time I had to share something, either a win or a bad feeling, I found someone there, even just one person to say, hey, I see you, I hear you. That's something when you're doing this completely alone and you see people shouting you out and encouraging you, even they have, they have no idea who you are. They might have not even seen your name in the group before. It's just a post. They, oh, she's, she's in the member club. She's talking about that. Okay. Hey, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and the inspiration of seeing other women doing things, taking big moves, taking big leaps, changing things. I changed my business name multiple times because I was growing as I'm learning and changing things around. Um, I've had multiple phases of entrepreneurship. You know, when you want to copy someone's branding because it looks good, and then maybe you want to um, uh, model someone's name because it sounds good and stuff like that. Until because of the, um, with the help of everything that I've learned, I put a vision for a business I want to start. And I I can't believe I I grew this much building your business helps you grow as a person as well mm -hmm. so, so five years ago the things that i was doing oh my god i i, I hide them hide them all <laughs> it's just like that <laughs> so every time i up level every time i learn something new i just um feel even better and even more grateful about being surrounded with the people who will always inspire you to become a better version, become a better version, up level again, up level again, keep going. Don't stop at a specific level and say, that's it, I'm done. Yeah, it's so powerful and so true. It changes everything, isn't it? Like who we surround ourselves with and, you know, being in the company of people that are doing inspiring things and following their dreams and 
watching that and then thinking, oh my gosh, because it's like, when we do that, even a bet for this conversation, it'll be really interesting to see like with the people listening now, it's like, how many of you listening just in listening to Ken's story has made you, has a light bulb moment gone off for you? Even just the thought of, I got 30 minutes within me to teach. I could create a mini course. I could sell it. I could put it out there. Like even that in itself is so powerful. And I think that's what being in, in communities and memberships like this, that's why it's so incredible because it's like an idea sparks from seeing this person post or watching this battle class or seeing this live session. And, you know, it just kind of expands and it expands like I just all these opportunities and ideas and keep coming. And like what you said about finding actual friends. It's funny because when I got into this online space as well, I started to connect with people and make friends. And one of my really good friends is Nikki Ellis Brown. And for a really long time, she lived in Hawaii. And we had been friends for like, I think three or four years before we ever met in person. And it's crazy because it's like, you're really good friends with these people that you've never even met that live on the other side of the world to you, but you're there supporting each other and helping each other to like grow your business. And, you know, it's, that is so powerful to be surrounded by that. And I just, I just love the internet for the fact that you can literally have a laptop and an internet connection and just a desire to want to figure out how to create something and you can figure out how to create it. Like, I love for you and your story, it was just like, okay, digital marketing strategist, I'm going to figure out how to do this. I'm going to figure out how to put it out there. And so what the thing is, like, once we decide we want to do something, we'll, we can figure it out. If we allow ourselves to figure it out, we can just figure it out. And then it's like, then we become it. It's like, you can't focus on growth and not grow. Like that would be like focusing on learning to play the piano and practicing the piano and then not getting any better at the piano. Like you would get better at playing. And it's, it's this thing, it's like surrounding ourselves in this energy to help us to keep growing and growing and growing and growing and growing and getting to that next level, next level, like you, what you said. Sometimes I feel, I wonder if you feel the same way. Sometimes I just so desperately want to scream from the rooftops about what's possible and really like get people to recognize that this isn't just about this person achieving it, this person achieving it, this person achieving it. This is about you being able to achieve it too. And I think so often we see other people doing it, but we still have this disconnect that it could be us. And I just wish I could grab hold of everyone that feels like, it's not going to be them and just let them know, just start walking on the way and like room, the roomy quotes, start walking on the way and the way will appear. Like you've got to start walking on it. You've got to start believing that this can happen. This can be your reality. And cause like so much is possible. Like there is so much abundance and so much success to be had. And there really aren't any limits on what's possible. The only limits are the ones we place on ourselves and I feel too often we've just placed way too many limits on ourselves. But I think that's the other part of being part of like a community like this is that you are then surrounded by people who are going for it at different stages. And again, it's like, it inspires you to think bigger and to dream bigger and for it to constantly keep evolving and evolving and evolving. But don't, cause don't you feel the same? Like, don't you just want to like get people and be like, you can do this, Like, you have to believe in me. I know that you can do it hundred percent like you have to believe it do you feel like that absolutely like when I see people for example like when I when I started um when I when I started watching ads for the members club before I started to join back then I was still in my local business I still couldn't afford the membership and it was a, a little um lower price than now when I first joined but the minute I got enough money to join for the first month I said I'm going to join for the first month and if it works out and I make money, I'm going to continue the membership. If not, I'm going to cancel. I'm going to wait a little and then I'm going to come back again. I remember being like my jaw dropped so hard on the floor <laughs> when I started watching the master classes, the bundles. They, they were named the bundles back then. And I saw, I remember seeing the first one I saw was Camera Luna's bundle that was about webinars back then. Yeah. It was incredible, but oh my God, that is awesome. Look at the teaching style. And because I was thinking of creating more courses, I also didn't just look at the content quality itself. It was amazing, but the way it was presented, that itself gave me like another thought. 
you can up level the way your courses look. You can up level the way you, your, your teaching style is. You can keep learning from those people and learn more information and go implement it and share your results with the world. So the more you learn and implement, the more results you're going to have to share. Yeah, so true. And one really good part that I have to talk about is um, when, I, when I started my business, I didn't have my son yet. And then I got pregnant with my son when I was in the um, first stage, the local stage. And then uh, my son was a toddler. He was driving me crazy. I was pulling my hair out. And even with that mompreneur or trying to be mompreneur struggles, um, I still found other women who have children, maybe more than one. I only have my, my son, but they have more than more children than I do. And they're still juggling it. And when I talked about mom guilt, they actually resonated with that. And I found that it's not just me because sometimes when you're too overwhelmed, you think it's just you. Maybe there's something wrong with my brain. Maybe I can't figure out a good idea or I can't put out, put a, a course together or an ad together or anything like that. But when you see other people going through the same pain, you realize it's not just you. And you, you know that it's a part of the journey. You understand that it was a part of the journey. First, I used to, to, um, to talk very negatively to myself when I, whenever I made make a mistake. Now, oh my God, like, okay, hi mistakes over here because <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be learning from you. And it's okay to make mistakes when you're learning. Some people asked me actually from the, from the Fearless Challenge group, they told me, you changed your business name. Why did you do that? Isn't it important to ch- start with the first name from the get go? And then I told them, no, when, when you're at the get go, you're with the knowledge of the get go. Yeah. And then you keep learning more and growing more. So your knowledge tells you what were you doing wrong before? And you have a chance to correct that. So you can keep changing and changing and nobody is going to tell you what are you doing? No one's going to judge you for changing your business for the better. Yeah, so true. When we're kids, we realize it's okay to be creative and to be messy and to make mistakes. And we, so we do stuff, we try things. And then as we get older, we get taught that like making mistakes is a bad thing, that we need to, like failing's bad. And so we just become so scared to like, to, to even give things a try. But if we get back to that place where we allow ourselves to make mistakes and to learn and to grow and to evolve, like life just blossoms and we create such magic because we're not afraid to put stuff out there and get it wrong. And you're like what you said, I, I think it's like welcoming in the mistakes and evolving and growing and, and, and learning from it. So it takes us to that next level. Um, it's like all the quotes say about like, I failed my way to success. And, and it's true. It's like, you've got to be willing to make a few mistakes to see if you don't, if you're too afraid to, go wrong you'll never know how to go right because it's often through going wrong that you actually figure out how to go right and um that what you just said though is such a mindset for success that we're never taught and you only really pick it up once you start doing this stuff and surrounding yourself by other people doing it and and learning and, and, and evolving your knowledge so that you can not only build a successful business, but like lead a really, truly successful, abundant, happy life. So it's, yeah, it's so interesting what you've just said. Um, I just think though your story is so, so amazing. This is the thing though, isn't it? Like we've all got oodles of knowledge within us that we can share with the world and that can be fun. Like let's just stop putting limitations on what we can and can't do or what we can't put, you know, and just put stuff out there that we're passionate about, that we love and 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 put it out there and just be of service to other people, help other people. And the thing is, it's like, sometimes people are like, well, I don't know how to pick the right idea. And I think it's just about allowing yourself to explore because where you start is probably not going to be where you end up. Like for me, I started in a business that was phone unlocking (laughs) and that's so far from where I'm at today. But if I hadn't started in that place, I would never be where I am today. So it's not about having it all perfectly figured out or knowing the perfect idea that's going to be the, 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 the be all and end all because that is just so much pressure. It's like figuring out what would be fun to just try as a next step and let's just try that. 
and giving yourself permission to just try and just go for it and then see like what's the next idea and the next inspired idea and the next inspired idea and as this journey evolves and develops and you like what Ken's was saying you then make mistakes or you figure out okay this doesn't feel quite right or this feels better and you start to like build out the way and make incredible things happen um it's it's so amazing isn't it it's I love this online world though once you go down the rabbit hole there's no going back it's like you realize whoa there's so many possibilities and opportunities here um it's so good was there anything else that you did that particularly helped you to like overcome your fears my son oh um I've had a somewhat difficult childhood, um, some family issues and some childhood issues. And my mom had to travel to another country to work in order to be able to afford our education, me and my sister. So she used to work 16 hour shifts in order to just be able to send money at the end of the month to finance our education. And we used to stay with our grandma. Wow. So I wanted my son to grow in an environment where he doesn't have to be away from his mom to have a good life. Yeah, wow. So I guess for all of us, it's thinking about the life that we can create on the other side of our fear and making that more powerful than the fear themselves, I think. Yeah, and my mom, the only, the only thing that um, she's, she, she, she thinks that this is her only achievement with us, but I know she's, she's, she's our queen, she's my hero. Um, but she taught us how to speak English from a very, very young age. And she thought that this is what helped us have better opportunities for a better future than, than she did. Um, she did graduate college, but she struggled to find a job that would um, help her take care of us. So uh, she had to work in another country in a different type of job just to be able to, to finance everything for our living, clothing, education, everything. And um, I can't find enough word to describe my gratitude for her teaching us from a very young age, not how to speak English, but teaching us that there are opportunities, that you're not just limited with this space that you think that you're sitting in. She didn't know there will be internet one day. She didn't know that um, her daughters are going to be able to help other people in, an, in a different country while they're sitting in their houses, sipping uh, tea. <laughs> it, it, she didn't know that, but she taught us that there are opportunities, no matter how things seem hard or you think that you're limited with something, you're actually not. And this is what I'm trying to do with my son as well. Right now, when he tries to talk about his dreams for the future, I tell him like, dream away. Anything that you think you want to be, you can be. Mm -hmm. He says, I want to be a doctor and an engineer. Well, then fine. Finish medicine and then become an engineer too. It's totally fine. If you don't want to do both of these, you want to be a guitarist, the world is yours. Do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. I didn't limit him into thinking that he has to just grow up, find a job, get married, start a family, and then continue working nine to five until the rest of your life. No, there's yeah. more to life than that. Wow, that's amazing. You're so amazing. It's Thank you. Incredible. I think people do that. I think we think that we're not qualified enough. We're not going to be good enough. But the only way to know is to get going with it. And your first attempt might be absolutely awful. It might be terrible. But the next time you do it, it's going to be a little bit better and then a little bit better and then a little bit better. And if you keep pursuing this journey of looking at how can I become amazing? How can I grow and develop my ideas? You will grow and develop your ideas until they are so much better, until one day you're like, wow, what have I created? This is amazing. All just from getting started in that place of, I don't know if what I'm going to put is it together is any good. I'm not sure, but I'm going to do it anyway. And I'm just going to learn. I'm going to grow and I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going and I'm going to keep going. It's like if you learn to play piano for the first time, you're not going to be any good. But if you practice and you practice and you practice, you're going to get better and better and better and better. And it's the same with your business, but you just have to give yourself permission to get started. Like we all start from that place of being unsure and not even knowing. like what you said, Ken, it's like, it doesn't go away. When I create new things, I get worried. Will it be good enough? And I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how it was going to go. But obviously I've been doing this now for nearly 10 years. So I've got 10 years worth of experience just in this, in just in building FEA 
that's helped me to get to this point. And it's like, you know, there's a great quote that says, don't compare your chapter one to someone else's chapter 20. Because I do think that so often we look at other people who are quite far away from where we're at and they've got so much more experience and we expect that we need to be at their level right now. And like, we need to give ourselves permission to be exactly where we're at with the level of knowledge we've got, but with the view that we're going to learn and grow and evolve and expand and to give ourselves that grace that we can just get going with how we are. Like, I mean, surely Ken, that's how you got started, right? Like just go, going for it. Yeah, I see, I saw a lot of women doing very creative ideas for courses. So there was this one lady who created courses on how to make sourdough in your kitchen. She literally just took her phone into the kitchen and filmed the entire thing. And she made $25,000 out of that course. Wow. She was shouting it out in the instructor's group and she was so happy. And then she started doing more baking courses and they were very simple, very basic, very straightforward. I saw another woman that inspired me so much. She was helping people dress well, just how to take a look at your wardrobe, put the colors together, find your style. So it's not, when I, because at, at some level I thought that because I teach on Udemy, so many people are interested in Udemy in business courses and programming courses and stuff like that. So I didn't even check the other categories and the success that was in them. So I found courses on makeup, on gardening, on uh, taking care of your pet and teaching your pet, uh, on parenting, on languages, on traveling, on budgeting. I've seen so different types of ideas. It makes you feel like, no, it's not just limited to specific ideas that are going to be a hit. No, any idea can actually be a hit. You just have to get started with it and test it. Yeah, so true and so powerful. Because you're right, there's like thousands upon thousands of courses on Udemy. But that I always, I mean, I remember Jada Selma said this in her masterclass she did for us called Love Over Metrics. She said, there's no such thing as a unique message, only unique messengers. And every single one of us is a unique messenger. No one can create a course the way you would create it because nobody is you and that is your power. And when you step into that power and you truly step into the most authentic version of you, then no one is your competition anymore. And it doesn't even matter because people will want to learn from you because of you. And like on Udemy, there must be like so many courses on social media, but it doesn't mean to say that people can't create a course on social media on Udemy and it can't be an absolutely raving success. Um, like surely, have you seen, you've seen, must've seen that Ken's. Thousands upon thousands of instructors and courses in the same category. But I learned something from this entire journey that people don't even buy the course for the information. They buy it for the transformation they're going to get from the course. And they get that transformation because of how you interpret those information, how you help them make use of those information. And no one, as you said it, no one's you. So... For me, myself, I don't believe in competition. I think there's a place for everyone. This entire world has enough opportunities for everyone. So if I create all the courses in the world and have millions and millions of people join my courses, there's still space for other people to also teach and also teach millions and millions. I have students who are in not just one or two of my courses, they're in 20 of my courses and in 20 other courses by another instructor in the same category, in the same field. And people like to make their own experiences. So they will learn from you and from another person and from a third person, and then form their own knowledge around the topic and start taking action. So there's not a sole person who has the only solution to the entire problem. There are parts of the solution that people are going to figure out by working with you and with other people. And when you are teaching someone something, as you said it, you're teaching it with your style, with your way. No one can duplicate that, no matter how similar you may seem. Similar is not, like, identical. So well said. That is so true. Everything that the market is doing to promote their courses, do the exact opposite. It's called pattern interruption. So if everyone else has a very long sales page with lots of, lots of testimonials for their course, think quick and easy for people, give people a quick and easy um, recap of what they're going to get out of the course. Don't talk about the course itself, talk about the results you're going to help them get. This is the 
the only thing that is helping me sell more of my courses. I don't focus on how many modules or how long the course is. Most of my courses are one hour to 90 minutes. The biggest course I have is two hours because I like to keep things straightforward, sweet and simple. People are busy. They have lives. They're, they're here just to learn that little thing and go. So focus on showing them how they're going to get out of the course. What's, what's the outcome that they're going to be able to achieve once they finish the course? Once you communicate that in your audience's language, it's done. It's, it's, there's nothing else. There's nothing better you can do. That's such a powerful thing to say. That's amazing. And I'm so grateful that you've taken the time today to come and share your story with us. And Thank I just, you. it's so inspiring. And I really, really just hope that everyone watching realizes that they too can create so much success. Like, I just, I just, I want you all to know it. Like, you really can do this. And so much opportunity. There's so many possibilities available for you. And I just want you to grab them and do everything that you can to create the success that you want, the business that you want, the life that you want. It's yours for the taking. And I want every one of us to take it. Um, but Ken, thank you for coming. And you're such an inspiration, like I said. Um, thank you so much, Carrie. Thank you for having me. It's been amazing. Um, can you let everyone know where they can go and find out more about you and hang out with you? Um, so I started my new baby, my business, Her Digital Business. It's www.herdigitalbusiness.com and at Her Digital Business at Instagram and Facebook. And I would love to see and meet everyone there. Amazing. Ken, thank you so much. And yeah, thank you for being a team leader in the membership and talking about the membership. It's just been so good to have you here. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you again, Kens. And you I'll see you very Bye, everyone. I hope you've loved this week's episode of the She Means Business Show. If you want more help and support to build a wildly successful business, then join hundreds of thousands of women and become an FEA insider. You'll get access to some of our amazing freebies, to our bonuses, to our giveaways, to so much good stuff. Head over to femaleentrepreneurassociation.com forward slash insider to get all of the goodness. And I will see you next week for another episode of the She Means Business Show. 